The penal laws in Ireland were a series of statutes that emerged from a complex interplay of religious, political, and social factors during the 17th and 18th centuries. To grasp the full scope of their impact, it is necessary to understand the historical context in which these laws were enacted. The 16th century marked the beginning of profound religious conflict in Europe, a period often referred to as the Reformation. This movement led to the splintering of the Christian Church into Protestant and Catholic factions. In England, the Reformation took a distinctly political turn when King Henry VIII broke from the Roman Catholic Church, establishing the Church of England. This schism set the stage for centuries of religious tension, which would have significant implications for Ireland, where the majority of the population remained staunchly Catholic. During the reign of Elizabeth I, England sought to consolidate its control over Ireland, a process that involved not only military conquest but also efforts to impose Protestantism. The Irish, however, resisted these attempts, leading to a series of rebellions and conflicts. The most notable of these was the Nine Years' War, 1594-1603, which ended with the defeat of the Gaelic Lords and the subsequent plantation of Ulster, where Protestant settlers from Scotland and England were established on confiscated Irish land. The political landscape of Ireland in the early 17th century was thus one of deep-seated tension between the Protestant English rulers and the Catholic Irish majority. The English feared that Catholicism in Ireland could be a conduit for foreign influence, particularly from Catholic Spain and France, both of whom were rivals to England. This fear was not unfounded, as there were several instances where Irish Catholics sought or received support from these foreign powers in their resistance against English rule. The Irish Rebellion of 1641, a Catholic uprising against English rule, and the subsequent Confederate wars further heightened English fears. The rebellion was brutally suppressed by Oliver Cromwell's forces, leading to widespread devastation and the further dispossession of Catholic landowners. In the wake of these conflicts, the English government became increasingly determined to solidify Protestant dominance in Ireland. The penal laws were a direct response to these perceived threats, aiming to weaken the power and influence of the Catholic majority. The penal laws were introduced gradually, beginning in the late 17th century and continuing into the 18th century. They were designed to systematically disenfranchise Catholics and ensure Protestant supremacy in all aspects of Irish life. The laws were draconian in nature, targeting various facets of Catholic life, religion, education, land ownership, and political participation. One of the earliest and most significant of these laws was the Act of Uniformity, 1666, which required all public officials to take an oath of allegiance to the English Crown and to abjure the Pope's authority. This effectively barred Catholics from holding any public office. Another critical law was the Popery Act, 1703, which forbade Catholics from purchasing land or leasing it for more than 31 years. The Act also introduced the concept of gavelkind, wherein a Catholic landowner's estate would be divided among all his sons upon his death, unless the eldest son converted to Protestantism, in which case he would inherit the entire estate. This law was intended to break up large Catholic landholdings and to encourage conversions to Protestantism. The education of Catholics was another area severely restricted by the penal laws. Catholics were forbidden to establish schools or to send their children abroad for education. The purpose of this was to prevent the transmission of Catholic beliefs and to undermine the Catholic clergy, who were seen as the main agents of resistance against Protestant rule. As a result, many Irish Catholics were forced to conduct secret hedge schools in remote areas, where children could be educated in defiance of the law. Religious practices were also heavily curtailed. Catholic priests were banned from entering Ireland, and those already in the country were required to register with the authorities. Unregistered priests, particularly those who had been ordained abroad, were subject to arrest and execution. Public worship was restricted, and Catholic churches were often confiscated or demolished. The penal laws also extended into the realm of marriage and family life. Mixed marriages between Catholics and Protestants were discouraged, and if a Protestant spouse converted to Catholicism, 
they could lose their property rights. Additionally, Catholic parents who sent their children to be educated in Catholic countries faced severe penalties. The impact of the penal laws on Irish society was profound and far-reaching. The Catholic majority, which had previously held significant land and influence, was reduced to a marginalized and impoverished population. By the end of the 18th century, it is estimated that Catholics owned less than 5% of the land in Ireland, a stark contrast to the pre-Cromwellian era, when they had owned the vast majority. The social fabric of Ireland was also deeply affected. The penal laws created a rigid social hierarchy, with Protestants at the top and Catholics at the bottom. This division exacerbated existing tensions and fostered a deep sense of injustice and resentment among the Catholic population. The laws effectively excluded Catholics from participating in the political and economic life of the country, relegating them to the status of second-class citizens. The restrictions on education and religious practice had long-lasting effects on Irish culture and identity. The Catholic Church, which had been a central part of Irish life for centuries, was forced to operate underground. This suppression of religious and cultural expression contributed to a sense of cultural alienation among the Irish people. However, it also fostered a strong sense of resistance and solidarity within the Catholic community, which would later become a driving force in the struggle for Irish independence. The economic consequences of the penal laws were equally severe. The prohibition on land ownership and the division of estates under the Gavelkind system led to widespread poverty among Catholics. Many were reduced to tenant farming, working on land that had once belonged to their ancestors. This economic disenfranchisement had a ripple effect, leading to increased emigration and a deepening of the rural-urban divide in Irish society. The penal laws remained in force, in varying degrees, throughout the 18th century. However, by the late 18th and early 19th centuries, the tide began to turn. The Age of Enlightenment brought new ideas about religious tolerance and human rights, and the political landscape in Britain was changing. The American and French revolutions also had a significant impact, as they challenged the traditional power structures and promoted the idea of equality and liberty. In Ireland, the rise of the United Irishmen a revolutionary group that sought to unite Catholics and Protestants in the fight for Irish independence, put pressure on the British government to reform. The first significant breakthrough came with the Catholic Relief Act of 1778, which allowed Catholics to own land and to pass it on to their heirs. This was followed by further concessions in 1793, which granted Catholics the right to vote and to enter the legal profession. The final and most significant repeal of the penal laws came with the Catholic Emancipation Act of 1829. Championed by Irish leader Daniel O'Connell, the Act allowed Catholics to sit in Parliament and to hold public office. While the Act marked the end of the penal laws, the legacy of discrimination and division they had created would continue to shape Irish society for generations to come. The penal laws were a dark chapter in Irish history reflecting a period of intense religious and political conflict. Their legacy is one of deep-seated division and injustice, but also of resilience and resistance. The Catholic population, despite being systematically oppressed, maintained their faith and culture, ultimately playing a central role in the eventual struggle for Irish independence. The story of the penal laws is a testament to the enduring spirit of the Irish people, and a reminder of the destructive power of discrimination and intolerance. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to dive deeper into the rich tapestry of Irish history, myths, legends, and folklore, be sure to subscribe to Emerald Chronicle. Stay tuned for more captivating short documentaries that bring the stories of Ireland to life. Don't forget to like, comment, and share with others who share a passion for Ireland's fascinating past.